In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the neat features inside the Elements Designer Digital's Designer Toolkit, and that is the ability to create frame layers. Now, if you've never worked with frames before, I'll show you quickly how frames are really impact your design capabilities here inside Photoshop Elements. Why anyone would want to design in Photoshop Elements any type of layout that didn't use frames I really have no idea because the frames uh, function here inside Photoshop Elements is absolutely amazing. Now I'm going to be using Photoshop Elements 9 but this, these frame functions have existed since version 4. The drawback is it's just not very well implemented here inside Photoshop Elements so a lot of people will steer away from using frames but once you understand how they work they're absolutely amazing. So let me show you what frames will do for you. We have three frames, three images here in the layout and each of these images is in a frame layer. So I can cl simply click and drag my image from the photo bin onto a frame and it will automatically be resized to fit the respective image openings. So you can see just very quickly with that very brief example of how quickly we can create a layout with absolutely no effort. All I'm doing is drag and drop my images. That's it. Now the other advantage to frames is we can resize a frame and the image within will automatically resize with it. And even if I change the proportion of my frame, the image within does not distort. So, and, and this is just an absolute amazing capability uh, here inside Photoshop Elements. Now, another advantage to working with frames is, is once I have a frame layer, I can choose any one of the frames in the Photoshop Elements library and convert to that frame with just a click of a button. So, I'll click this frame, and look at there. Now she's in the doghouse. And if I click on this frame, she'll be the teacher's pet. Okay? So really cool stuff, and in, like I said, in certain circumstances, um, you know, these frames can be just really neat just by double clicking on them, and look at that, beautiful, beautiful, super amazingly simple. Now there are some drawbacks to frames. One of them is if we wanted to create a frame of a particular shape, we're not able to by using just the basic functions of Photoshop Elements. Now the designer's toolkit is going to give you the ability to create any type of layer into a frame, which is actually quite useful. Now some of these frames we can't modify and we wish we could. So for example, I'll add one of these frames. I like this frame. It's a nice frame. It's got a nice little scalloped edge to it. I just wish I could sample the color on her scarf and make that brown be kind of this teal blue. And unfortunately, it doesn't give us the option to make those type of adjustments. Now, some frames you can actually modify. If I take a basic orange frame here, I could actually modify that orange. So if I come over to my layers palette and come in here and click on my layer style, it does give me the ability to sample a color from her scarf and change that frame. And then I could increase the size of my stroke as well. Okay. So some frames are better than others in that they allow more edit capability. Now we also have the ability to add frames to the library. And we actually have three different collections of frames that we've created for Photoshop Elements. You can see them here. If I just double click on one of these frames, it'll instantly be added to my image. And some of these effects can be really quite striking on the different images. See, really pretty different things. You can just try all kinds of different ones till you find one you like just by double clicking on it. So it's super, super easy and super nice to have that kind of flexibility when you're working with frames. Okay, so that kind of gives you the basic overview of what frames are all about. Now, like I said, there are a lot of frames inside Photoshop Elements, and a lot of them just aren't really that terribly useful. And the ones that I really like, like for example, I really like this frame, and it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful frame. I just wish I could change that color of that, that outside edge, and there, unfortunately there's no way to do that within Photoshop Elements. So, let's go ahead and go back to our Layers palette here. And let's delete. And let's take a look at what we've done for you here in the Designer's Toolkit. 
Well, what we've done here, if I click over to the effects, we'll come into the Elements Designer Digitals Toolkit here. Now, I only have just a couple of functions installed currently, but I want to show you just two functions and that's relating to creating frames. And so the first function allows us to convert any existing layer into a frame layer. So for example, I can simply grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to draw out some rectangles. I'm going to copy this layer over, copy this layer over, and then I'm going to convert these four to frames. So I just select one, convert to frame, convert to frame, convert to frame, and finally convert to frame. Just that fast, instantly these are now frames, and now I can drag and drop my images into them, and the images will automatically scale to fit the size of the frame. And likewise, if I decide to change my frame, I can do so, and the image within will change with my frame, and I won't lose any image quality. I can adjust the exact cropping within the frame. And then once I have a frame, I can come back into my content layer, and I can still change these frames to anything I want. So just double click on it, and the new frame is applied. So, I mean, it's just amazingly simple now that you have that capability within the designer's toolkit to be able to add those frames. So let's go ahead and delete all of those. So again, any type of frame or any type of layer can be converted into a frame. So for example, I'll show you another little trick here. I'm going to use the rounded rectangle function here inside Photoshop Elements. I'm going to drag over a couple of guidelines because what I'd like to do by default we have a rounded rectangle on all four corners and what I'd like to do is I'd like to square off two of them. Okay, I'm going to view clear guides so we can see this a little bit better. So now I have a nice shape with two squared off corners and then I'm going to come in here and convert to frame and then when I drag and drop my image fits right into my frame and now you can see I have an image opening with two rounded corners. Now this is nice because I don't have this particular shape within the default frame library here inside Photoshop Elements so now I'm able to create that and use that whenever I want to. So that's a nice little uh, added bonus. So remember any layer can be a frame layer and so for example I'm going to make a circular shape and then I'm going to subtract from the circular shape by using my rectangle tool and I'm just going to cut it in half and then I'm going to use this function in Photoshop Elements called Shape Selection Tool and hit Combine and that kind of simplifies it. So now once it's been simplified convert it to a frame and then I can drag and drop my image and it's just going to fill in just that half a circle. Flip it vertically and horizontally here and just that easy we could maybe even choose a different image here there's lots of images to choose from this one might actually work pretty well See there? And we can zoom in a little bit and move it over a little bit. So you can have a lot of fun creating all kinds of different shapes with frame layers that don't currently exist inside Photoshop Elements. And remember, because we have a frame, we can drag and drop. And I can always change out my frame layer from the existing content library just with a double click of the mouse very very fun stuff that we can do with Photoshop elements okay so we've kind of shown you some of the techniques in creating and converting existing layers into frames then the next level of craziness is the ability to convert any selection into a frame so all I have to do is make a selection and I'm just going to make a selection like so and then choose the convert to frame function 
and that will take that and convert it to a frame. And then if I draw an elliptical selection, I'm going to have a 150 pixel feather convert to frame. And then when I drop in my image, I'm going to have a nice soft edged image opening. So pretty nifty stuff on the different types of things we can do. Now I can even go one step further. I can even grab my my type tool here and let me just type in the word senior. Okay. And I'm going to convert that to a frame. And then all I'm going to do is drop in an image. And you can see that the image now fills the entire shape for the word senior. Now how cool is that? So lots of different options there. Let me just drag that back in there. We can put in a different image in the back there if we want. Or we could just come in here and delete that frame layer altogether. So really the possibilities are absolutely limitless when you think of some of the different things that we can do. So another example with our selection here, I'm going to do zero feather. I'm going to draw out a circle. And then I'm going to subtract from that circle using Photoshop elements. Now I have this kind of moon shape and then I'm going to convert that to a frame. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop in my image. And you can see now my image fits the entire moon shape. Okay, so that kind of goes through the basics of the new functionality within the designer's toolkit in being able to create our own frame layers with any type of shape. So we really have just a lot of flexibility, and I think you're going to really enjoy having that extra capability. Now, let's take a practical look at really creating a whole layout very quickly using that frame function. So I'm going to select the entire background layer and create a frame, and then I'm going to make a selection. I'm going to change my foreground color to a slightly different color, create a new frame. And then I'm going to go ahead and make another selection. This time I'm going to do the elliptical selection with a 100 pixel feather. I'm going to switch over to my layers palette, come down to my, my bottom frame layer. I'm going to switch my foreground color to white, grab my rectangle tool, and draw out a rectangle. And then I'm going to lower the fill opacity. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in some images here. So to begin with, I'm going to drop in a background texture. Let's go ahead and do that. That'll fill up the entire background of my canvas. And then we'll come in here and we'll grab an image. And then maybe one more image. And I'm going to flip this horizontally just because I think that looks better. And then I'm going to change the frame layer. Just resize it to fit a little bit better the way I want it to. And you can see what a great looking effect that we've created very quickly and very easily using that new frame function in the designer's toolkit. Thanks for watching.